Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Lowani. Uh, it's a pleasure one more time to be here. And uh, let me extend my gratitude to, to Apostle Newton and Pastor Lillian uh, for this opportunity. You know, it's a, it's a favor. It's an opportunity that you are given to speak. And uh, I, I don't take it for granted. I thank the Lord so much. Amen. And it's good to see each and every one of you uh, in your different homes, in your different places, in your different nations. Uh, for me here, it's a bit very cold. So uh, I, I, I pray that the Lord will help me <laughs> as we preach the word together. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm so much excited when we, when we look into the word, for the word is the one that gives us a direction and insight for what God wants us to do. And uh, I thank God so much for this uh, 21 days of prayer. Like I was saying yesterday, uh, this, this season of prayer is actually different from the, the previous ones that we, we've been having. Uh, because this one is more confrontational, this one is more militant, this one is more uh, uh, intercessory, this one is more direct, whereby we are, we are, we are not uh, trying to sugarcoat everything. We have to try by all means to make it plain and that we can understand that as long as we don't fight the battle, the enemy takes over what belongs to us. You know, I'm, I'm excited even when you look at the, the scripture for today, the book of Nehemiah, where Nehemiah is saying you have to fight for your children, you have to fight for your brethren, you have to fight for your sons, you have to fight for your wives, you have to fight for your homes. When you continue to read the scripture, uh, even in verse number 17, you, you realize Nehemiah, the Bible says that those that were building, in one hand they were holding bricks, but in the other hand they were holding uh, a, a, a weapon. So in, in other words, where we are, we, we cannot choose not to fight. We cannot choose not to engage in this battle. The, the builders, one was holding a brick, but at the same time was holding a spear. At the same time, one was holding a trumpet. And, uh, you know, I, I was, I'm trying to imagine how were they building in such an environment? How were they building in such a circumstance? How, how were they doing it that in one hand there's a spear, but in the other, in the other hand there's a brick? How do you build? So at the end of the day, you need to understand that you need to engage the enemy. You, you don't need to run away from the enemy, but you need to engage the enemy. Uh, our discussion this morning, we want to take it from the book of Matthew, chapter number 11, from verse number 2. Uh, let me quickly read and, and Matthew, chapter number 11, from verse number 2. And when John heard in prison about the words of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to him, go and tell John the things which you see and hear. The blind see, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Verse number 11, I surely I say to you, among those born of a woman, there is not a reason one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Verse number 12, from where our discussion will come from. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent would take it by force. Let me read again verse number 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, this scripture is written in present continuous. So in other words, even Jesus is speaking at this scenario, is still applicable to where we are now. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent, violence, and the violent would take it by force. Let, let me just encourage someone this morning uh, I want to talk to you about taking it by force, looking at this scripture and looking at this scenario. When you look at John the Baptist, he's, he's, he's bridging the Old Testament and is bridging and ushering in a new season, a new dimension, ushering in a new dispensation of, 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 of the church. And, and, and the coming in of John, he's coming in as a bridge. 
that is bridging the old and bridging the new. And, and, and in all these things, you need to understand that the environment in which John the Baptist is coming in is not smooth. The environment that John the Baptist is coming in is not, is not, is the, the landscape is not, is not conducive for him to minister. The landscape is not conducive for him to become what God wants him to be. That's why when we read last yesterday, the Bible says he was in the wilderness. Why was he in the wilderness for all those days? God was preparing him for the kind of a ministry which he was supposed to bring forth, which he was supposed to usher in. John is ushering in a new dispensation. That's why you hear him saying, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. What is he saying? He's saying, I'm ushering in a new dispensation. But before I do that, we have to lay a foundation. We have to lay the right environment that can allow the Son of God to come in and begin to work the work of God. And, 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 and I, I was looking at this whole thing. You and I, if I just imagine that if you were during the, or probably if John was the preacher in our time today, how many of us would be so much comfortable to sit, to sit under his ministry and to continually hear him preach and to continually be ministered to him every day? You know, John was, was, was you know, he, he, when you look at today's preachers and comparing them to John, bringing John today in our scenario, men of us will leave church. Men of us will not be comfortable to hear him. Men of us will not be comfortable to sit under his ministry. Number one, look at the location of the church. There's no comfort. Everyone is coming into the wilderness to hear him preach. Number two, the Bible says he was clothed not in suits, not in jackets, uh, but he was clothed in camel's hair. L look at the kind of food that he's eating. He's eating locusts. He's eating honey. He's not, you know, a today, you know, he's not the kind of a pastor that you and I would do, sit down and listen. And at the end of the day, look at his message. The Bible says the Pharisees, they come, when you read Matthew chapter number three, the Pharisees, they come in, and instead of welcoming them and answering them and giving them a seat for them to sit, he turns around and says, you brood of vipers, what are you doing here? You know, he, instead of welcoming these people, this man is shouting at them, you brood of vipers. Who has taught you, you know, who has warned you of the incoming danger? Why are you here? Instead of releasing a message uh, of encouragement, this man is lambasting them, this man is bombarding them, uh, and this man is calling them a brood of vipers. And he's going straight to them and say, if you don't repent, don't even say we have Abraham as our father. Because God can even raise his stones in your place. In other words, John is saying the axe has been laid on the tree. You know, God is doing you a favor. So this is, kind, this is the kind of a preacher that God is raising. And now when you listen to what Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has suffered the violence and the violent will take it by force. I want to show you that John is not a preacher which so many of you and so many of us can sit down and why? Because the environment is coming in is an environment which demands him to be so forceful, to be so militant, and to be a warrior. And I want to show you that, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the Jewish community, you know, the, 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 the Jewish religion was, was the top of the notch. In other words, it was, the, it was the religion of that day. But guess what has happened? After 400 years, there's so much quietness. Not only that, the temple has been destroyed. Not only that, when you look at them socially, you know, there's a blend in of so many cultures, uh, the Babylonian, the Persian culture, the, the Greek, uh, and all of a sudden the Romans, and, and John is coming in this kind of an environment. When you look at economically, John is speaking to a, to a, to a system uh, where there is a, a, a class of the rich uh, and there's a class of the poor. The gap is so huge, the gap is so big uh, to a place that the rich are oppressing uh, the, the poor and the poor are so much comfortable in their poverty. 
You see the likes of the Karayas, you see the likes of the test collectors. You see, this is the environment which John is coming in. Religiously, there's so much, you know, a, a, a spirit of syncretism whereby they are bringing in foreign goals, whereby they are bringing in foreign cultures uh, and foreign system. Uh, you know, the, the purity of the Jewish religion uh, is no longer there. And God cannot bring uh, just a nobody to come and minister and bring in a new dispensation. Uh, he has to bring in a forceful man. Uh, he has to bring in a warrior, a man that understand to do war with the things and the spirits and the demons of his days. And I want to believe that, ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of environment that we are in. Religiously speaking, there's so much that is happening. When you continue to read this scripture, you, you can see even when Jesus begins to talk about John, he says, what can I liken the kingdom? What can I liken this generation? He's saying they are like children in the marketplace. You know, he's saying that this generation is like children who are in the marketplace. They, they, they say we have played the flute, but it's not dance. We moaned, but you did not cry. We called for you, but you don't listen. Well, what is he saying? He's saying there's a spirit of religiousism, the, the spirit of traditionalism. We moaned, but you did not cry. They understood how to, to hire people that will come and cry at a funeral. You know, it's, it's, it's a traditional environment. We moaned, but you did not cry. We played the flute, but you did not dance. In other words, there's so much entertainment. Religion is seen as a game. Religion is seen as a source of entertainment. And he's saying, I liken this kingdom of this generation to children. In other words, the children, they see everything as a game. When I look at this king, at this generation right now, what Jesus is speaking about during his time is so much applicable in our time. There's so much entertainment in the church. There's so much traditionalism in the church. There's so much religiousism in the church. To, you know, the church has become a place of entertainment, uh, but I've come to tell you this morning uh, that there's a new day, there's a new generation, there's a new era which the Lord is bringing in, uh, and there's a new breed of men and women that God wants to raise, uh, men that are going to take the kingdom of God by force. Men that are going to say enough is enough. We are, we are tired of playing church. We need to see the real power. We need to see God alive and working and operating in our time and in our generation. Ladies and gentlemen, if we remain quiet, if we remain silent at a time like this, I tell you the devil is going to wreak havoc in our time. He's going to wreak havoc in our homes. You know, when you look at the scripture from the book of Nehemiah, he's saying, I want you to fight for your homes. I want you to fight for your brethren. I want you to fight for your children. I want you to fight for your houses. I want you to fight for your wives and your husband. What is he saying? If you don't take up arms and begin to war against the devil, the enemy will continue to withstand and oppose whatever God wants to do in your life. Somebody today, you have to take it by force. I know so many of us, we are, we are so much comfortable in the things that we are doing. But I want to challenge you this morning. We are now at a time where we need to engage the gear of warfare and begin to challenge the status quo in our lives. Begin to challenge the status quo in our homes. Begin to challenge the environment in our families and begin to take everything by force. I want to say something to someone here. The devil is not going to hand everything on a silver platter. You have to fight your way through. You have to fight for your healing. You have to fight for your, for your children. You have to fight for your mental health. You have to fight for your children. You have to fight for your home. The devil is not going to hand everything on a silver platter. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent will take it by force. Don't expect that the enemy is going to bring everything on a silver platter. Don't expect that the enemy is going to hand over things in your life. 
you have to fight your way through. There are times where you have to go on your knees and begin to battle the enemy. There are times where you have to go on your knees and begin to battle the enemy of your destiny, where you need to crush down the altars from the pit of hell, where you need to rise up in the spirit angry and, and engage the spirit of God violently. The Bible says, and the violent would take it by force. Our families are dying. We cannot remain quiet. The young generation is gradually moving away from God. We cannot remain quiet. The cows, are, 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 no, they, 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 they've strategized and they are coming in. And most some churches have become centers of cultic operations. We cannot remain quiet. At one point, Esther is told, if you remain quiet at such a time like this, deliverance will come from another place. If you don't take up arms, who is going to do it? If you don't rise up in the spirit, who is going to stand up for your family? If you don't rise up in the spirit, who is going to stand up for your community? If you don't rise up violently in the spirit of God, and who is going to stand and defend this young generation? I may not know about you. But looking at where I am right now, you find so many young people, they are now hooked on drugs. Guess what is happening? That is a generation of young people that are going to be destroyed by the devil. It's not just drugs, but that is a generation that is going amiss. The next presidents are now drunkards. The next scientists are now drunkards. The next preachers of the next generation, they are now hooked on drugs. Who is going to stand up? The young generation is hooked up on prostitution. Who is going to stand up if you and I, we don't rise up and engage the enemy? I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we need to become angry and say enough is enough. The violent would take it by force. Looking at where I am right now, because of the poverty that is around us, so many people, they are engaging uh, spirit entities. They are invoking forces from under the seas. They are invoking forces from under the waters. Guess why? So that at least they can cushion their lives. But I tell you, these spirits, uh, they are not just tormenting individuals, but they'll end up tormenting the next generation. If we don't take up arms, what is going to happen to the next generation? These are altars that are being erected. These are spirit entities that are being invoked from under the sea, that are given leeway, that are given bodies to operate on, because the devil cannot operate without bodies. But there are people that are deliberately invoking them and allowing them to be possessed by the devil. Enough is enough. The violent will take it by force. We need a generation of men and women that are going to say, if I don't pray, God generations are going to die. The violent would take it by force. And the Bible says, I say you are Peter. And on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Prevailing there, it means there's a warfare that is taking place. Why is Jesus saying to Peter, the gates of hell shall not prevail? It means there is a warfare that is taking place. It means there's a battle that is raging. And you and I have been quiet for too long. My brother, forgive me. My sisters, forgive me. But I want to tell you, you have been quiet for too long. It's time to rise up and fight. We, we have been too comfortable in our cocoons. We have been too comfortable in our places. You know, sometimes because we go home early, sometimes we don't go outside and see what is happening. We, we know we don't see the evil that is taking place. We are so much comfortable in our little homes. We are so much comfortable in our little places. We don't see a generation that is dying out there. We don't see men and women that are dying out there. And when we talk about it, we say, no, no, we are okay. But can I tell you something? The next target of the enemy is your, is your children. And the devil is very cunning. Guess what he'll do? He'll bring the, end, the battle right at your doorstep. 
Some of you, your children are wayward. Some of your children die today. They don't want even to hear about God. Do you know why? The devil has brought the war at your doorstep. Some of you, it's not even your children, it's you. You have been sick for a long time. Guess what's happening? The devil has brought the battle at your doorstep. If you remain quiet at a time like this, you need to rise up in holy anger and say, enough is enough. I am claiming my birthright. Enough is enough. I'm claiming my right. Enough is enough. I'm claiming my community. My children cannot be, my children cannot be instrumental in the hand of the devil. I'm claiming them back. We need to rise up in holy anger. We need to rise up and say, God, enough is enough. And get here, 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 Matthew chapter number 16. Uh, Jesus says, I'll give you the keys of the heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. In other words, uh, if you, you know, he's saying, I want you to begin to engage. We are at war, ladies and gentlemen. I want this to sink in. We are at war. And the devil will make sure that he brings it to you. You think, no, me, I'm comfortable in my home. I'm comfortable in this little church. I'm comfortable in this little place where I am. I want to tell you something this morning. The devil is bringing the battle to you. If you think that you'll be safe where you are, he, he is bringing the battle to where you are right now. And the church has been quiet. The church has been silent. You listen to our prayers. Our prayers, you know, we, we, we are so much comfortable. We, we are so much careful in our prayers uh, because it seems like we don't want to ruffle feathers. Uh, we, we don't want to, 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 to sort of like, no, 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 it, 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 it be on the wrong side of the devil. My brother, my sister, the moment you say, Jesus, uh, be my Lord and my Savior, you went on the wrong side with the devil. So don't think it's about what you're going to say automatically. The moment you were transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the king of God, of, 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 or, 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 you know, from, from the kingdom of darkness to the, to, the, to the son of God, I tell you the battle came to you. Automatically, you declared war to the enemy. So don't think if I, there are prayers I need, don't, don't need me to pray. I hear some Christians say, men of God, there are prayers which I don't need to pray. I tell you, there are prayers which you need to pray. Because the failure to pray those prayers, uh, the devil will take advantage of your ignorance. And Jesus is saying, uh, the violent uh, will take it by force. Look, look, look at Isaiah chapter number two, verse number two. The Bible says, in the latter days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains. What is he talking about? The, the first mountain is singular. The, the second mountain is plural. The, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established uh, on top of the mountains. In, in other words, uh, they, there is a, a, a dispensation. In other words, there is a kingdom that must be ushered in above certain kingdoms in our lives. Above the family mountain. Above the economic mountain, above the polit political mountain, above the media. Right now, go on social media. You, you have to be very careful. Because every day, there's a lot of rubbish that is, being, that is being sent on our social media platforms. You know, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't engage in warfare, the enemy will take advantage and remain comfortable in our areas, in our places, and in our environments. Jesus is saying, and the violent will take it by force. The violent will take it by force. Jesus, John, sent people to him. And say, are you the one? Or should we wait for another one? Jesus did not answer. When you go to, to, to Luke chapter number seven, you know, the, the, the same scripture, the same, the same you know, scenario, Jesus did not answer. The Bible says the moment he was asked this question, he began to heal the sick. 
He began to set captives free. He began to raise the dead. He began to preach about the kingdom of God. Then he turns around and says, go and tell John the things you have seen and the things you have heard. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lamb walk, the dead are rising from the dead. Go and tell John. In other words, Jesus is saying, number one, this kingdom, it must be demonstrated. We don't just talk about it, but we have to demonstrate it. The answer that he, what John wanted had to be demonstrated. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring you to uh, your attention to this scenario. We need to come to a place where uh, you and I, we begin to demonstrate God in our day-to-day -day lives. The violent will take it by force. Jesus is saying we don't talk about the kingdom. We don't speak about the kingdom. We demonstrate it. Right now, there are so many religions that are coming in. Right now, there are so many things that are happening. And these religions, some of them, they are coming in, they are feeding the poor. Some of them, they are paying school fees for children. Some of them, they are, they are, you know, they are, they are bringing in medical, medical systems and medical attention to the poor. Guess what they are doing? They are hooking people. They are fishing people by money. They are fishing people by bread. But you and I, we need to demonstrate that our God is bigger than this religion. Yes, we can feed the poor, but we need to go beyond feeding the poor. Yes, we can pay school fees, but we need to go beyond paying school fees. Yes, we can provide medical attention to, 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 the, sick, to the sick and to the poor, but we need to go beyond all these things. We need to begin to demonstrate God's glory and God's power in our lives and through our lives. We need to demonstrate God. Because as long as this God is, dem is not demonstrated, uh, he become the same like Muhammad. He become the same like Buddha. He become the same uh, like all these other religions, the Hindus, uh, the Buddhists. You know, we, we become like them. We need people, men and women, uh, that are going to demonstrate their God. Uh, and the violent will take it by force. The devil must know that there's a generation of men and women that are ready to demonstrate their God, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the power of God, full of the anointing, that are saying enough is enough. Wherever we go, we must become an aroma. We must become, you know, we, we must demonstrate the power and the glory of God. We need the men and women, a generation that is going to demonstrate their God. Go and tell John the things you have seen and the things we have heard. When last did you see the move of God in your life? Do you know sometimes it becomes too much comfortable? When last did you have an encounter with God in your life? Jesus is saying, go and tell John the things you have seen. Meaning to say, the things about God, we don't, we don't just talk about him, but we have to see him in operation. We have to see him manifesting. We have to see him doing things in our lives. When I look at most of you, you are at the right place, at the right position, where you can begin to demonstrate this God. We don't just pray. After praying, we go and demonstrate. We don't just preach. After preaching, we go and demonstrate. We don't just speak about him. After speaking about him, we go and demonstrate. Wherever you are, I want to challenge you. You are the right candidate to begin to demonstrate God. In your workplace, demonstrate this God. In your family, demonstrate this God. You have to tell the devil, devil, leave my children alone. 
There are devils which you have to cast out of your children. You, you, you don't need the man of God to come and deliver your children. You have to rise up as the priest of the house. You have to rise up as the king of the house and cast those devils out. And say, devil, devil, you don't belong in my home. You don't belong in my marriage. You don't belong on my finances. Leave and leave and don't come back. I always say this. I remember at one point I had a, a member in our church. In the middle of the night, the devils begin to manifest at home. Guess what? They tried to look for my phone number, but they could not, they could not find it. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil is very cunning. If you don't wake up, you take advantage of you. You want to call Apostle Newton, Apostle Newton tells you, no, I'm not around. I'm in Zimbabwe for ministry. What do you do? You call Pastor Lowani, Pastor Lowani is not there. What do you do? If you don't wake up, the enemy will take advantage of you. The Bible says, and the, the, the violent will take it by force. You need to begin to engage the enemy in your life and say, and the devil, enough is enough. I'm taking hold. I'm reclaiming my life. I'm reclaiming my destiny. I'm reclaiming my marriage. Some people right now, you are giving up on your marriages. You are giving up on your homes. You are saying, ah, no, 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 we have failed. We have gone for counseling. Did, did you cast out that devil? Yes, you went for counseling, but did you cast out that devil? Did you take time to declare and to speak into your marriage? We, we, it's easier to run to the counselor, but did you run to the counselor of counselors, the Holy Spirit? Did you run to the comforter of comforters, the Holy Spirit? Did you run to the king of kings? I'm here to challenge somebody here this morning. I'm here to put a fire in somebody's life and tell you it's time to wake up. Because if you remain sleeping, the devil will continue to play his games in your life. It's time to become violent and take it by force. Number one, you have to demonstrate this God. Number two, you have to learn to enforce kingdom demands and kingdom decrees in your life and in your territories. It's high time we stop praying this other prayer that we've been praying for too long. God, my life, I want you to favor me. I want you to bless me. I want you to visit me. God, no, 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 we need to wake up. It's time to enforce kingdom decrees and kingdom demands in our territories, in our homes. It's time to begin to legislate that the kingdom of the governance of God in our territories, where we tell the devil, devil, I rule in this place. Devil, I am in charge in this place. You don't come to my house. You don't come to my workplace. You don't come in my car. You don't come anywhere. It's time to enforce kingdom decrees and kingdom legislation. God is depending on you. The violent will take it by force. It's time to enforce them. In your life, the devil has been doing things and you have been quiet. Who do you want to come and enforce these things? Australia, it's time to wake up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Because if you remain silent, I tell you, we might have the money, we might have the good life, but the devil is destroying generations after generations. It's time to wake up. Africa, is time to wake up. The Philippines, is time to wake up. If we don't remain, if we remain quiet at a time like this, uh, generations are going down the drain. It's time to enforce uh, kingdom decrees. It's time to enforce uh, the will of God uh, upon our societies, uh, the will of God upon our homes. Let thy kingdom come. The, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, let the will of God be done in our homes. Sickness is not the will of God. Did you hear me correctly? Sickness is not the will of God. Oppression is not the will of God. Barrenness is not the will of God. 
Are, are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Demonic, demonic challenge, demonic oppression is not the will of God. Pain is not the will of God. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to understand the will of God and enforce them. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosened. In other words, I'm giving you the opportunity to in legislature, to bring forth the kingdom governance and the violent will take it by force. I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, God has given you the keys. God has given you the ability to enforce it. And if you don't rise up, if you remain quiet, the devil will take advantage of our lives. We need to begin to decree decrees in our lives. Decree decrees of our children. Every morning before they leave for school, decree. When they come back for, from school, decree. Before you leave for the office, decree. When you get into your workplace, decree. You know, we need to begin to become legislators, uh, governors of our areas. Decreeing decrees, enforcing the will of God uh, over our homes and over our lives. If we remain quiet, the enemy will take advantage of us. And the Bible says, when you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 4, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Why do we need weapons when we are at peace? Why do we need weapons when we are at peace? Ladies and gentlemen, the, we the weapons of our warfare, listen to this scripture, the weapons of our warfare, meaning to say we are at war. Where is your battle armor? Why are you so much relaxed? We call for 21 days of prayer. You only fast for one day. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. <laughs> is somebody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Forgive me if, if, I, if, if, if I'm becoming like a John the Baptist today. I say we call for 21 days. You only fast breakfast, but you ate lunch and, and, and supper. Uh, you, you need to be serious with your God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at war. Why do you act as if we are at peace? We are at war. Why do you act as if everything is okay? We are at war. You know, the, the Bible says, and this kind will only go out by prayer and fasting. You know, he's not talking about fasting breakfast alone. He's talking about genuine fasting going all the way. You don't die if you do three days. You don't die if you do five days. You don't die if you do 21 days, no food. You don't die. No one has died because of fasting. But the enemy tells you, no, my brother, you have to watch your health. I tell you, you know, fasting is another way of even watching your health. It's the very best way of detoxing your body. So don't let the, 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 the naysayers, don't let the enemy whisper to you things which are destroying your destiny. The Bible said this kind will go out by prayer and by fasting. We are at war and you need to rise and engage your gear of prayer, your gear of warfare. Number one, you have to demonstrate God. Number two, you have to enforce kingdom decrees and kingdom, uh, 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 kingdom demands. Number three, you have to change your prayer tactics and your prayer strategies. The violent will take it by force. This is a dispensation which John is ushered in today. The violent will take it by force. You have to change your strategy of prayer. You have to change your tactics of prayer. You have to change your way of praying. You have to change it. If you are going to see results, ladies and gentlemen, there have to be a shift. There have to be a, a shift in the way you do things. Can, can I show you something? which is in scripture. When you go to the book of Acts chapter number six, chapter number 13, the Bible says Paul has gone out to preach. But this man, this sorcerer, you know, he, he began to become a stumbling block before Paul. 
Guess what Paul did? The Bible says Paul turned around. And the Bible said that Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at the sorcerer and said, Oh, you full of deceit, on all fraud, you son of the devil. Listen to the prayer of this man. You son of the devil. He's not talking to, you know, he's talking to a man and he's calling him, you son of the devil. You enemy of all righteousness. Will you not cease to pervert the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. I pray may God raise men and women that are like Paul. That can bring instant judgment to men and women that are rising up in opposition. That are rising up in judgment against your life. You son of the devil, you enemy of everything that is right, may you be blind. He's not the only one. You can also look at Peter in Acts chapter number 18. He turns around to Simon and says, you Simon, you and your money, may you perish. May you and your money die. Because you don't understand what you are doing here. May you and your money, in other words, we have to change the way we pray. We have to change the way we do things. We have to change the way we approach the kingdom of God. We have to become forcible. We have to become forcible. Take the word as it is. And until we rise up in holy anger, we remain captive. Until we rise up in holy anger, we remain bound. We have to tell the devil, devil, enough is enough. I'm claiming back my life. There are times where you have to rise in the middle of the night. I know you love your sleep, but can I challenge you this morning? There are times where you have to rise in the middle of the night and begin to decree decrease in your family. I know you enjoy to sleep, my sister. I know you enjoy to sleep, my brother. But can I challenge you? Can, can I say something to you? You need some time to rise up. In the, you need to go the whole night in prayer. The Bible says when you read the Gospels, at one point Jesus went the whole night in prayer. And when he came down from the mountain, things begin to happen. You need to change your strategy. You need to get hold of the word and begin to speak it. You need to get hold of the word and begin to declare it in your environment. You need to take hold of the word and declare even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away. Even the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. You contend with him that contend with me. My God, my king, contend with my enemies. They that have risen against me, O oh God, according to your word, may you rise up against them. They that have gathered against me, you say, God, in your word, they shall gather, but not because of you. Every gathering that is not of you, bring it down. I tell you, you need to change the the way you pray. You need to change the way you do things. You need to become forceful. You need to become violent. Come on, be angry a little bit. Is somebody here what I'm saying this morning? You be angry, not at your boss. Be angry at the devil. Be angry, not at your neighbor. Because he's playing loud music. If he's playing loud music, come on, put on your music and pray the whole night. Why are you silent when the enemy is still continually speaking against your life? You need to be angry. You need to tell the devil, devil, my children must be set free. You need to tell the devil, devil, my home must be delivered. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, to begin to pray these dangerous prayers. It's time to claim territories. 
It's time to engage intercessory prayers where you stand up on your platform, where you stand up in your homes and say, I, I claim communities. I stand as a territorial commander. I command that every spirit from the pit of darkness, you are not allowed in this place. It's time to become a territorial commander and begin to command and legislate and invoke the power of God in your life and over your territory. Today, witches, they are always on their altars, enchanting and invoking spirit entities. Why must we be quiet when the witches are doing it? Why must we be quiet when the witches, why when we, we must be, well, why are we supposed to be quiet when the sorcerers are doing it? Today, there are people that are going to the sea invoking spirits, invoking forces from under the sea. Why must you and I be quiet? Ladies and gentlemen, these things are real. Okay, can I tell you something this morning? These things are real. Demons are real. Witches are real. Sorcerers are real. Enchanters are real. And they operate with the demonic power. And if you are not careful, their powers will affect you. But Jesus is saying the violent will take it by force. These people, they are there, they are real. Sometimes they come fair, fair they, you know, they come straight to you. In Africa, we call it fair, fair. They don't hide behind anything. They come straight to you. But if you remain quiet in a system and environment like this, I tell you, your life will remain bound and stagnant. It's time to, be, to become violent and begin to take your destiny by force. You need to claim your destiny by force. You need to claim your, your home by force. You need to claim your, 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 your life by force. You need to claim your mental health by force. Suicide is a spirit. And right now it's, it's, it's hovering over nations, the rich and the poor. Depression is a spirit. And right now it's moving across the nations, the rich and the poor. The rich are being depressed because their monies are diminishing. The poor are being depressed because whatever they had is no longer there. Depression is real. It's a spirit of the enemy. And if you are not careful, you continue to drink you know, medication after medication. You need to claim your life by force. You need to claim your home by force. You need to claim your nation by force. If you remain quiet, the enemy will take advantage of you. I want to close. I want to close. Some of us, we have visions, we have dreams that we wanted to achieve. But because of the challenges around us, we gave up on those dreams. But those dreams, it was the Lord that gave you the dreams, those visions. But listen to what Habakkuk says. Write it down. Make it plain on tablet or paper that whoever sees it may run for it will surely come to pass. The only way it can come to pass is when you stand up and become violent and, con and, and cause your dreams and cause your visions to come alive. Listen, let me read this scripture. Then we pray together. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. It's not about the time of Jesus. Until now, the kingdom of heaven have suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Can you be angry a little bit? Can you look at the affairs of your life? Can you look at the affairs of your life? Can you look at the situations around you? Can, can you look at the circumstances around you? 
Can you not see that the devil has brought the warfare to your doorstep? The devil has brought the warfare into your home, into your life. I want you to rise up in holy anger and tell the devil, devil, enough is enough. I'm tired of all the things you've been doing in my life. I'm tired of your workings. I'm tired of your delays. I'm tired of you suppressing my dreams, my vision. I'm tired of you holding on to my, to my, to my blessing. I'm tired. The Bible says when you read the Bible, the book of Daniel chapter number 11. Daniel, from the day that you began to pray, the answer was released. But the prince of Persia, which stood for 21 days, for some of us, it's not 21 days, it's a lifestyle. It's 30 days, 30 years. The answer is being held in the realm of the spirit. For some people, it is 40 years. With the same circumstance. Why? Because the princes in the air are holding on to your answers. In the next few minutes before I hand over to, 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 to Pastor Lowani, I want you to unmute. I want you to become violent in the next few minutes and tell the devil, devil, enough is enough. I'm claiming back my life. Enough is enough. I am claiming back my family. I don't know what the devil is doing in your life. I don't know the kind of environment that he has ushered in your home. But one thing I know, the violent will take it by force. I want us to pray. Then I'll close in prayer this morning. Let's all unmute. Let's yes, begin Lord, to pray. Jesus, yes, the Son of God, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. 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 Mantuze kente ke kika dusa lanta kika badu haya. My father, my God, this morning, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. Whatever you did not plant in their lives today, let it be uprooted in Jesus' mighty name, the Son of the Living God. Every planting which is not of my Father, every planting which is not of my God. Every planting which you did not, my God, endorse today, let it be brought down. Every season, Lord, which you did not allow to come, but is crept in, in the lives of your people today, Father, let it be brought down. Every system of the enemy, every system from the pit of hell, Lord, that every reason, Lord Almighty, and taken preeminence in the lives of your people today, I stand against it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I release the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Whatever is not of you today let it catch fire whatever is not of you my father today let it catch fire whatever it is it might be sickness today whatever you did not condone whatever you did not plant i decree by the power of the holy ghost let it get fire in jesus name Whatever, Lord, is not of you, every chain of oppression, every chain of depression, today I speak against it and I curse it in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever has been invoked from generation <coughs> to generation today, I stand on this altar and I speak against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, this morning, let chains break. I say this morning, let chains break. Let your people be set free. Let them be set free in their dreams. Let them be set free in their homes. Let them be set free in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every chain of oppression, let your people be set free right now. Lord, I release your grace. I release your power. Every man, every woman under the sound of my voice this morning, let them be set free. Let them be delivered. And one more thing I ask of you, Holy Ghost. May the spirit of the living God saturate them. May you bring them to another level in their prayer lives. May you bring them to another level, God, in their, in their, in their ministry to you. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, may you kindle a fire. May you kindle a fire in their hearts this morning. May you steer their hearts this morning to stand up, Lord, and begin to fight in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you. Uh, over to you, Pastor Luwani. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, come on. We receive that word. I receive that word in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. We receive it. We receive amen. it. Amen. We receive it. We receive it. Lord, it's time. Enough amen. is enough. We receive right. it in the name of Jesus. To so wage war Jesus. against the devil. Rabba Kosha. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. My God. In Jesus' name. Wow. What a word. What a word. What a word. Praise God. Just want to acknowledge a few of our guests uh, here this evening. We have uh, uh, Chimpui uh, joining us for the first time all the way from Malaysia, uh, as well from Penang. Uh, also, the family from PNG. Uh, they're here under a, a name. I can't, I can't see Maravan Nanadai. They're all, they use one phone, and they have uh, a lot of them. They're, they're sitting, sitting, but using one phone. Uh, that's PNG for you. Uh, just because all the other credits are gone. They all, the credits are gone. So they only hire one phone uh, and, and use it. So th thank you so much. We have uh, a few others that are here as well. Sheree uh, from uh, South Africa joining as well. Thank you. Thank you. We have our Kent's family, Pastor Glenn and Pastor Maggie. Uh, Mim joining us from Kent's. Uh, our family from uh, Brisbane, our Brisbane family joining as well. Just want to say uh, thank you to everyone joining. I know you've been blessed. Uh, you've been blessed. And we are here even next week. We have Apostle Kos uh, speaking to us as well. Wow, what a word. Uh, what a word that's been delivered uh, this evening. What a challenge. What an encouragement uh, and uplifting word as well. Uh, to keep the covenant of time, we'll, we'll close here tonight. But tomorrow, uh, join us same time uh, here. We'll be here 6 a.m. Uh, and in the evening, uh, Pastor Kos will be at 6 p.m. as well. Uh, on a Friday night. So that will be our, uh, our final night for the week, but following week we'll be here back as well. In Jesus' name. Thank you. If I can get uh, Pastor Glenn, uh, if I can get you to close us in prayer, uh, men of God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This was such a blessed word. I just came halfway through it, but what a word. Uh, just, Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for the encouraging word, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that we don't have to be um, laid back Christian. We don't have to be one that just wait for the word. But, Father, that we will come and we will take things by force according to your will and your purpose. We thank you, Father God, that you, of oh God, have laid the foundation and you have shown us the way, Father God. And, Father, as, as a child of God, as a man of God and woman of God, Father God, we'll take up our hands. And, Father God, we march forward, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the word, and we thank you for the, what you're doing, Father God. We're not here, Father God, to see our generation go down, but we're here to fight for our generation, Father God. And Lord, whatever it takes, you will arm us, Father God, and we will fight according to your will and your purpose. We will take it by force. So we thank you for the word, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for each and every one, Father God, that heard that word, that, Father God, that they will be empowered. And, Father, they'll even share it with others, oh God, and tell them they don't have to take the things of the enemy, that we can stand together and we will take it. We'll take back our family. We'll take back this generation by force in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory and honor. Lord, we give you all the praise. And we say, Lord, oh God, let it be done according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen.